Lakeside Dental Clinic, Go Island, is brought to you by Lakeside Dental Clinic. That is where we're headed today on Go Island, Gabriola Island. Why? Because it's the kickoff to the 2015 Isle of the Arts Festival. New totems at VIU's Aboriginal Gathering Place, looking ahead to the 2015 Reuse Rendezvous and an island adventure to Pacific Cottages. We're pretty excited about this launch event. That's Susan Juby. She's having a little nap. She will be speaking at the event later, and we'll try to get an interview with her as well. We also ran into Michael Kosugak. He's an Inuit children's author. He's on this ferry and will be on the event as well. Uh, we'll have a bit of an interview with him later. But first, Fiona Shedden checks in at the Aboriginal Gathering Centre at Vancouver Island University, where Aboriginal carvers from different nations are all working together on totem poles. This is the program for the sixth annual Isle of the Arts Festival. We're here at the Surf Lodge on Gabriola Island. We made it off the ferry on time. Um, how do you choose? There are more than 50 different workshops in here. Is it possible, Alina, to pick any highlights? Uh, well, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I would say the highlights are definitely the events because you get to meet all of the artists who are teaching these amazing workshops. But in terms, we've got workshops for everyone, so it's really difficult to choose. We've got workshops for writers, from best-selling authors like Susan Juby or Michael Kusujak or anybody like that. We've also got ones that are very hands-on, like Echo Dying from the Spinners and Weavers Guild or Make a Viking Knit Bracelet or Mosaic a Shoe, and also a ton of free workshops for kids and a ton of free workshops in the elementary school. So the 10 days are jam packed with all of these events in the evenings and these uh, workshops during the day. So it's no secret that the arts community on Gabriola is very active, very um, vibrant, very talented, very skilled, very varied. This festival though expands beyond Gabriola? It does, yeah. We we have amazing artists on Gabriola, but something amazing about this festival is that we also get to bring artists from elsewhere over here to kind of um, inspire our artists and kind of show them something different so that they might expand in other ways. So while most of our festivals really focus on Gabriola, this one it focuses on both. So we've got the amazing artists coming over here and we're sharing uh, what the amazing artists here have. So we've got both, which is really great. Um, even something we've got cheese making this year, which is creating edible uh, delicacies, artful delicacies. So you can you can work with every what everybody's talents in various ways. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The Arts Festival, the Isle of the Arts Festival, runs here on Gabriola until April the 12th. You don't want to miss out. You can go online for a full listing of all the workshops and sign up. Some of them are already selling out. We'll be back with more after a short break. Still to come today, Nanaimo's Reuse Rendezvous is coming, artifacts through art in Souk and checking out Pacific Cottages and Marina. Susan, you look well rested. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is the short pause that refreshes, yes. Do you always nap on the ferry? <laughs> always. Yes, that's what ferries are for. And you didn't know we were there. I didn't. No, I'm, I am a little embarrassed that you caught that little, uh, that little beauty rest of mine. For, I had kind of hoped the ferry trip was longer. But yeah, it does so go good. very quickly. It does when very you're quickly. in REM sleep, yeah. Well, you need the sleep. You've been working really hard. I have. You've just released the Republic of Dirt. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, what is it? Uh, it is a book uh, set out in Cedar about a young woman who inherits a derelict farm and it's about her very hard work trying to keep this farm going and all the people from collapsing around her. So that's what that one's about. And I'm in the middle of reading it now. It's part two, do you call it that, to the Woolfield yeah, Poultry it's a Collective? It takes place right after the Woolfield Poultry Collective ends. And, uh, and in it, the main character has developed a thyroid condition, so she's very, very tired. <laughs> So I You're sort of like that. living osmosis, or you know, it's not falling on you. What do they call it? Phantom pregnancies and stuff yeah. like that. You're not. Yeah. No, I actually gave it to her. I also have extreme tiredness from a thyroid condition. So, or I say I do. Okay, I'm yeah. going to use that one too. Yeah, um, absolutely. Four very distinct characters. Yes. Uh, briefly introduce. 
them. Well, we have Prudence, who's a young uh, New Yorker. She's from Brooklyn, who inherits the farm out in Cedars. So she's in culture shock, but she's a wannabe farmer. And everybody loves her. Well, she's very Prudence. pretty and They're... energetic until the thyroid thing. She and does nothing wrong. She yeah. inspires people. She's optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, she's... Um, I don't totally relate to Prudence, uh, but the other one is a young man named uh, Seth, who is an alcoholic, agoraphobic, heavy metal blogger, uh, who's just recently sobered up. So, and he is not a very handy guy, but he finds himself a farm hand. So, and he has a lot of issues. Uh, in this book, they're mostly romantic issues. And then we have he Sarah. hasn't been laid in a really long time, or he ever. Has never, ever. Okay, ever. we'll just I would clarify never. that. All right. I'm sorry, Sam. Maybe it happens, but we won't give that part away. That's right. I don't even know that part. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Sarah, who's an 11-year-old, whose parents are in the middle of a very acrimonious divorce, and she has competitive show poultry. And she's the only competent person on the farm, as so many 11-year-olds are. And then we have Earl, who's a man in his 70s, uh, who is uh, the lost member of a legendary bluegrass group. And Earl's curmudgeonly, but um, he's trying to hold things together while Prudence is, you know, flattened by thyroid. How did these characters come to you? I, and you must be able to relate to all of them in some way. Absolutely, yeah. So they're all some little part of me. Um, I, you know, it's just that people will say things, I'll have met a type of person, and then I cobble together these, these you know, individuals. And then at a certain stage in writing a book, they, uh, they sort of take on a life of their own and start mm -hmm. saying things and doing things and just entertaining me. And of course, I just spend a lot of my time thinking up terrible things that can befall my characters. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my little children, but yes, that's what I do. Well, I'm enjoying the book very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Republic of Dirt, the latest release from Susan Juby. You can get more information uh, through her website. We're going to throw things over now to Kelly Robinson. She's wandering the streets of Nanaimo looking for garbage. The annual Reuse Rendezvous promotes reuse through a weekend-long curbside swap meet. It runs this year on Saturday and Sunday, April 11th and 12th. We're moving now from the Surf Lodge here on Gabriola Island down to the Souk area. Daphne Good is spending some time with artists who work in a wide variety of disciplines to feature some of the uniqueness of the Souk area. Here's Daphne. Oh, any stresses of the day seem to instantly melt away here at Surf Lodge on Gabriola. We're honored today to be spending some time with Michael Kosugak. He's written more than 15 children's stories, won numerous prestigious awards, and it's all because storytelling was a part of your life and your ancestor's life and before that and before that for as long as you can remember. Yeah, it was always one of those, you know, grandmother, please tell me a story. and. My grandmother would say, but I have no story to tell. Grandmother, please tell me a story, but I have no story to tell. And after I asked her many, many times, she would finally say, okay, settle down and I'll tell you a story. And that's where they all started. You know? And was she making them up as she went, or this was from the Inuit culture, and were they legends that she was telling you? Oh, they were mostly legends. And all a lot of these stories are just, you know, just little stories like, and it's a story about a little girl and her grandmother. And they get left behind all by themselves in their igloo. And then a little bird came, it broke the window, it said, Palatatatyuk, and flew away. And, and that was the story. Mean? What does that mean? What does. Well, it's like, you know, um, birds say tweet tweet. Okay. Well, those are English birds. <laughs> These are Inuit they, birds. Yeah, we have Inuit birds, and they don't say tweet tweet, they say okay. and you can hear them, you know, uh, the little snow I will bunting. forever hear yeah. birds in Inuit now, I think. <laughs> and you, Trent, you, you were telling your children stories at bedtime, and yeah. you got tired of, of the Dr. I, Seuss and, and, and the yeah, English all those stories. Books that, you know, when I started this, there were, I, there were hardly any books that were written, written about the North and probably none for children, and hardly any books uh, for kids in Canada, for that matter, because that was, you know, 1986. That was quite a long time ago. And so 
I put the books away and I told my boys a story about these creatures that live under the ice. Uh, because, you know, we live on Hudson Bay and in the springtime we like to go down to the sea ice and to jump from ice flow to ice flow. So my mother used to say, don't go down to the sea ice. She said, under the sea ice there live these ugly creatures. And she said, they're called Kadlupidluit. And she said, Kadlupidluit are old women trolls. They have a great big coat with a big pouch on the back to carry babies, but their pouches are always empty because they don't have any babies of their own. So if you go down to the sea ice by yourself, they will say, aha, there's a little boy with no mother and no father. They will take you, they'll put you on their backs. They'll take you down under the sea ice and they'll never bring you back. So we were always scared of these creatures and I told my boys a story about them. And that's the way it all started. And is that what Promise is a Promise is yeah, based on yeah, now? That, that's the... Yeah, it eventually became this book, Promise is yeah. a Promise. What are you working on right now? You got a book in the works? Um, I, I wrote a book called The Curse of the Shaman, which is a, a novel. And it came out in 19 or 2008. And I'm working on the sequel, which is called The Mean Night. That's a working title. Mm. And I have to get it done before the end of this month, so. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna change direction entirely now and uh, throw things over to Mary Ruth Harris. She's on an Arbutus RV Island adventure. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. The Isle of the Arts Festival here on Gabriola started April the 2nd, runs through until April the 12th. You can get more details on all of the workshops online, artsgabriola.ca. And just a final note, as busy as Susan Juby has been with the recent release of the Republic of Dirt, well, she's also got another release coming up. It'll be available in stores April 14th. It's called The Truth Commission. Thanks for watching this edition of Go Island. We'll see you next time. Lakeside Dental Clinic Go Island is brought to you by Lakeside Dental Clinic, a division of the Vancouver Island Implant Center, delivering dental services, including dental implants and sedation dentistry, all under one roof. Clothing supplied by Catwalk Fashions, Kate's hair and aesthetics provided by Maffeo Salon.